Hi everyone, this is Muhammad Kubay. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to integrate Amazon Web Service with Azure Active Directory. The reason for integrating Azure Active Directory is you can have a unified login experience so that you are using for your Office 365 or to log into your domain machines, VDIs, etc. etc. So you can make use of the same credential to log into your Amazon Web Services as well. So the main advantage of using Azure Active Directory is users no need to remember multiple credentials to log into AWS or Azure or anything else. So they can use their domain credential to log in everywhere. This is because of the Azure Active Directory. And one more advantage of Azure Active Directory is you can make use of conditional access policy, which will help you to secure your infrastructure. So to integrate Azure Active Directory with AWS, we are using a protocol called SAML, which is Security Assertion Markup Language. So when you talk about SAML, which is SAML, so we need to consider two things. One is service provider and one is identity provider. Service provider is the one which is seeking the service. So in this case, it is AWS and identity provider it is the one which is providing the identity service to the service provider, which is Azure Active Directory. So in order to configure, we need to log into the AWS portal and we need to search for AWS SSO. So when we search for AWS SSO, we'll get a lot of services over here. So we need to select IAM Identity Center. So let's launch this one. So once we are in this particular blade, we need to enable the feature. So once we enable this feature or service, we'll get the details over here like dashboard, users, groups, settings, etc. So we need to select settings option and then it will redirect it to this particular page. So now we have to scroll down and we need to go for the identity source. So as of now, identity source is identity center directory and the authentication method is password. So now since we are integrating with Azure Active Directory, we need to change this. So to do the change, we need to click on action and then we can select change identity source. So here we have three options, identity center directory, which is by default selected. So the another one is Active Directory. So you can integrate with your Active Directory or managed Active Directory. The third one is external identity provider. Here you can integrate it with other identity provider such as Azure Active Directory or any other third party identity provider. So let's select this and we'll click on next. So here configure external identity provider. We have two fields. One is service provider metadata. This is the metadata of the Amazon Web Services. And then we have identity provider metadata. This is the metadata of the identity provider such as Azure. So let's download the download metadata of the service provider. This is required to configure the Azure site configuration. So let's download this. So we have downloaded the metadata file over here. So now I will go to the Azure portal and I will configure the related SSO parameters. So this is my Azure portal. So I will go to the Azure Active Directory. So this is the identity provider for my Amazon. So under Azure Active Directory, we need to go to Enterprise Applications. So once we are in this blade, we need to select a new application where we are going to define the parameters related to AWS. So here we need to search for AWS IAM. So let's type AWS. So we'll see AWS IAM Identity Center. So this is the one we need to choose. So once we choose this, let's click on create. So now the application is added successfully. So if you go back to the enterprise application and if you refresh, we should see AWS IAM Identity Center. So let's go inside this and let's do the other settings. Let's do the pending settings. So here we need to select single sign on and then we need to select SAML. So SAML is nothing but security assertion markup language. It is a protocol used for the single sign on. So we will get this particular tab. So here we need to select upload metadata file. So let's click on update metadata file. 
So this is the file which we downloaded earlier from the AWS console. So make sure to select that and then we will click on open. So then we can click on add. So it will pop up a new window. Just verify the things over here like the URLs, etc. So then we can click on save. So basically these all are getting from the metadata file which we uploaded. So once this is done, let's close this and then we need to go to the SAML certificate. Under that we need to download Federation Metadata XML. So this is the identity provider XML file we need to download and this we required in the AWS portal. So the download is completed. So let's go back to our AWS. So here we have an option called upload IDP SAML metadata. So let's choose the file and let's upload the file which we downloaded from the Azure portal. Let's click on open and then we'll click on next. So just verify everything and just type accept and then click on change identity source and then you will get a message saying that you have been successfully changed the identity source so one very important thing you have to make sure that we need to enable automatic provisioning so this is very important when we are configuring azure active directory with aws so let's enable this and let's hit on show token so these values are very important so let's copy this to our notepad. So I'm going to copy the scheme endpoint URL. So let's paste it in the notepad. Similarly, we need to copy the token, which is access token. So I'm going to copy that as well to the notepad. So once we have these values, we can go to the Azure portal. And then under the IAM application, we need to hit on provisioning. Let's hit on this particular provisioning tab, which is under the manage and we will set this provisioning mode to automatic. And then we need to enter the scheme URL and the secret token, which we copy to the notepad. So let's copy this again and we will enter it over here. Similarly, the value of the access token, we need to paste here in the secret token. So once we have entered these details, let's hit on test connection. So if everything is perfect, our test will be succeeded. So as you can see, now the test connection to AWS IAM. So it is successfully completed. So now let's hit on save and go back to the other options. So now it is successfully saved the details which you all entered over here. So let's go back to our AWS applications. And the last option which we need to perform is we need to assign the users in the Azure Active Directory portal so that those users will be replicated in the AWS as well. So to do that, let's go to users and groups over here. And then we can click on add user group. So as you can see, groups are not available for assignment due to Active Directory plan since I'm not using P1 or P2 license, so I'm unable to add the groups. However, I can add users. So let's click on the users tab over here. So under users, I have a user which is created for this purpose. I have a user which is created for this demo purpose. So which is test AWS at the rate as -E WBD, which is my tenant name. So I'll click this. So whenever you create or whenever you add any users, make sure that the user will have an attribute field first name and last name. Otherwise, it won't get replicated to the AWS. So click select and then click on assign. So now this particular user has been assigned to the AWS application. So now this particular user has been added to the AWS. So one more step is pending. So once again, we have to go to the provisioning. So here under provisioning, we need to click on start provisioning. So the moment we click on start provisioning, it will try to replicate the users which we have added to the AWS cloud. So once the provisioning is successful, so we'll get a message over here. So let's refresh this. As you can see, 
the initial cycle completed so one user which is selected so this will replicate that user to the aws cloud so sometimes it may take some time for the replication however if you wanted to replicate immediately you have an option called provisioning on demand so you can forcefully sync the users as well so now let's go back to the aws console and i'll jump into the user options over here so as you can see now i have my user which is test aws which is from the azure active directory so in order to assign this user with the permissions or roles to perform some activity or to log into the aws console we need to assign this particular user with the permission in the account so i'll go back to the aws account over here so here we need to select the account on which we need to provide the access to the replicated user so my account which is in production under vda workload so this is my account so i'll select this particular account so then i need to select as in user or groups now we need to choose the user which was replicated from the azure active directory so let's click on users so here we have the user so let's select the user and then click on next so this is the page where we are going to set the permission so let's click on create permission set so it will open a new tab so where we have to choose the roles or permissions required for this particular user so either we can choose predefined permission set or we can use our own customized permission set i will go with the predefined one so here we have a predefined roles so i'll select administrator access so this is the full admin access to the aws so based on your requirement you can choose whatever relevant to you so i'll click next so here we need to give a name for this permission set so i'm going to give administrator access azure ad and then i'll click next and i'll click on create now we have created the permission set so now we need to bind this permission set with the user so i'll go back to the previous window so here if i refresh i should see the permission set which i created so this is the permission set i'm going to assign it to the user so i'll click next and i'll click on submit so now the aws will add this particular user to the account so now user can use the azure ad credential to log into aws and they can perform all the activities which we allowed in the permission set so now let's go back to our dashboard over here so here in the dashboard we will have a separate url to access the aws using azure ad so as you can see aws access portal url so i am going to open this in the incognito window so this will redirect to the azure active directory page where we are going to enter the azure ad credential see from the aws it redirected to the login.microsoftonline.com which is a azure active directory page so i'm going to enter the user details here so this is my user which is test aws i'll click on next and then i'll enter the password over here so once i enter the password i'll click on sign in so now it is successfully logged into the aws so now it will ask me to select the aws account since i have given the access to only one account so it will show that particular account if you have multiple accounts it will show over here so let's go into this particular account and here we have an option management console or cli so i'm going to choose management console so now it will take me to the account so now i successfully logged into the aws console using azure active directory so if i go to my region which is north virginia so i should be able to see all my resources including ec2 instance vpcs etc because i have the full admin rights for example let's say if i go to ec2 and if i select instance over here so i'm able to see my ec2 instance successfully so this is how you can configure azure active directory as an identity provider for the aws
so which will help in provisioning your existing user account so users no need to remember multiple credential to manage multiple cloud etc etc so you can use azure ad as a single entity for all your identity purpose the biggest advantage of azure ad is you can make use of azure ad conditional policies so so which will help you to secure your infrastructure